So let's take a look at soft boxes, LED panels and umbrellas. I'll describe how they're used in the studio and how we can recreate their lighting effects in Maya. So a softbox is a device used to create even and diffused light. Here in this example we can see how it's constructed. Inside is the light source, it's a fluorescent bulb in this case, and we've got a silver backing to reflect the light on, and then the important part is this white diffusing material. And what this does, it spreads out the light so the light is coming evenly across that entire surface, very much like our area lights in Maya. And here's a pretty typical photography studio setup that's using softboxes. Now there's no subject in this scene, but we can see it's a three-point lighting setup. We've got the two softboxes being used as the key and the fill respectively. And here's another example. It's a little bit more elaborate. We can see two softboxes being used as rim lights. Now if we look closely, we can see both of these softboxes have grids on the front. The purpose of these grids is to control the spill of light to the sides. We can see in the rearmost softbox that the light is coming straight at us and we're getting to see the full extent of its light. However, the one on the side, the grid is effectively blocking the light. What this means is the photographer gets to use the soft diffuse light from the softbox area style light, but also control its spill in the scene. And in this example, we can see a giant softbox being set up. So this is being custom rigged. There's a large sheet of diffusing material and behind that is most likely going to be lit by HMIs. LED panels are another tool used to create soft even light. They can be as small as a work light or go as big as about 4 by 1 foot. They can also be stacked together to create large areas of controllable light. Each panel is constructed of a grid of small individual LED elements. And on the high-end models, the color temperature is controllable. Another of their advantages in the real world is that they're quite low power, so they emit very little heat. Now the umbrella is another tool used to create the soft diffuse light. Umbrellas work in one of two ways. Firstly, there are reflective umbrellas. Here the strobe is pointed into the umbrella and the light is reflected out. So the umbrella effectively becomes the area light source. And the umbrella itself can be colored to give a warmer or a cooler light. And the other type of umbrella is a diffuse translucent one. Here the strobe is shone into the umbrella and is diffused through the material. This also gives an even and diffuse light similar to the softbox. One of the disadvantages for the photographer is that the spill is somewhat uncontrollable. One of the nice things about these silver umbrellas is that they can give a very nice reflective surface to catch highlights and to create a lot of blings. And in the case of the very high-end large ones that are used in fashion shoots, they themselves can become props in the studio. Here's an example of one that's been used as a background for the photograph. Okay, let's take a look at some real-world examples in action. So here we can see two softboxes being used to rim light the subject. There are grids on each of them to control the spill of the light. And in this example, we can see there's an umbrella on screen left being used to bounce light in, and then on screen right to the rear, we can see an octagonal softbox, and this is a very good example of the grid being used to limit the light spill. From this camera angle, we can't see any of the light source, which means the spill has been blocked off. And here's an example of the finished photograph. This could have been taken using either a softbox, an LED, or an umbrella. They're all going to give this kind of soft light. And here's an example from a film, and as such, it's most likely going to be a softbox or potentially an LED light. So let's take a look at one of Maya's area lights being used to recreate the effect of a softbox. Here's a studio setup with a directional light that we're going to use to compare with the softbox. Now you can see the directional light is casting a hard shadow. You can see this on the right side of the nose. You can also see the psych on the background is being well lit. Now most of the time in the studio we're trying to control both the softness of the light and the amount of light spill that there is. Let's take a look at a softbox set up from the same angle. So now I'm going to hide this directional light and I'm going to use this softbox that I've prepared. Right now I'm just using the Arnold area light. We've got the fall off as quadratic, the light shape is a quad that's a square. Let's see what this looks like. Immediately we can see the quality of the light in the face is quite different. We've got soft shadows and overall it's a lot more flattering to the subject and it smooths out some of the hard angles. 
Now the main control we have on this area light is going to be its size. Let's take a look. So first off, let's make it a lot smaller, perhaps similar to a small LED panel. As we can see, the shadows become more defined. Now let's make this light very large, like a big softbox panel. We can see that the light has begun to wrap around the face and the screen right cheek is starting to be filled in. And uh, we can also see the reflection really starting to play in the eyes. I'm going to expose up just so we can have a, a similar overall lighting look. So with this one control, we've got quite a few different looks. The subtle differences between softboxes, LED panels and umbrellas only really play out when we start to look at their reflections. So let's take a look at those. Okay, let's hide this figure and I'm going to show two spheres which will render. So you can see very clearly we've got a large area light reflection in the chrome sphere below. To emulate the effect of a softbox more accurately, what we're going to do is add an HDR texture to this area light. Okay, let's browse for an HDR texture. So if we look at this texture, we can see the ripples in the diffuse material that are being stretched over the front of the softbox. We can see that the center of the softbox is brighter than the edges. And all this is going to give nice detail to pings and specular highlights, and of course, broader reflections where we actually see the square of the softbox. So let's load this up. I'm going to change the color space to be linear. And our softbox light is still using color temperature for the color, and um, we've input that texture into the color, so we'll need to turn this off. So we use this HDR texture that we've now loaded. The big difference is in this reflection here on the chrome sphere. The diffuse light is pretty much working in the same way. We've got some nice shaping on the light itself, and if we expose down, we can see all that detail in the light. And this will work nicely as well in post, when we want to maybe defocus some little specular highlights. Uh, they'll bloom in a nicer way with this slight color variation. And we can use the same technique to emulate the lighting reflections from LED panels and umbrellas. Let's take a look at an LED panel. So here I'm going to unhide this LED panel that's been created, and we can see here in the color input, we've attached this LED panel EXOR. Let's render this. So we can see in the reflection clearly, we're getting all these points of light, just like in the real LED panel. Another interesting feature, because the softbox is a bit more of a localized center light, the light falls off a little bit more quickly towards the edges relative to the LED, which is much more even. And of course, this is the case in the real world. Let's also take a look at an umbrella. Once again, it's the same, it's the area light set up in the same place. Once again, it's an area light set up in the same place. We'll input an HDR of an umbrella into it. One thing that's interesting to know is we want to keep the light shape to be quad. If we change this to disc shape, which which does more accurately match an umbrella shape, uh, it will not render with the texture attached. So we need to keep it as a quad. Let's render this. And here we can see the umbrella reflection in the chrome ball. One of the main tools I use when working with area style softbox lights is having drop down flags built into the light. So let me show you how. So in this example, we've got a softbox directly above the subject. And we can see the light is bouncing all off the side and we're getting some upward diffuse bounce light from the floor. We can see it lighting under his chin and nose. So what the flag will do, it'll help us to control this. Here's the light. Now I'm gonna unhide this flag that I've attached earlier. It's got a Maya black constant shader attached. The nice thing about this setup, it's very easy to adjust the length of the flag, and this is exactly the control we want to control the light spill. Let's take a look at the, the render now. What we've done is I've brought the flag right down, so we're still getting the area light. 
By lowering this flag, we're blocking the softbox's light from spilling onto the rest of the psych where we don't want it. But we are getting a bright pool of light on the subject and on the floor where he's standing. We'll show this in a wide render. So as we can see, the light is now more focused on the floor and not lighting up the background quite so much. This is a great tool to use when you're doing a scene where the light needs to interact with the environment. Let me show you how I set up a softbox with the flags. So I'm going to create an Arnold area light. Next up, I'm going to create a poly cube. I'm going to scale that up so it just covers the, just covers the area light. And as an initial setting, I like to have it quite thin. Now I'm going to move it forward. So when I scale the area light, the flag is extending out of the front and not the back. And now I'm going to delete the front face of the polycube. Next up, I'm going to attach a Maya constant shader. I'm going to use this just as black backing. I'm going to name that now. Okay, now I'm going to name the, the flag and the area light. I'm going to call this softbox. Now I'm going to place the flag under the softbox. And here we have the softbox with the flag control. Let's do a quick interactive render and we can see how it's working. We can see the softbox light is spilling out over the whole scene. And now we want to control it a bit. So what we'll do is we extend the flag forward and it gives us the effect of shaping the light fall off. Now when I adjust the flag, these shadows remain the same. It's not adjusting the quality of the light itself. It's simply adjusting the light spill and fall off in the surrounding areas. We mentioned light grids earlier. Now, these can also be known as egg crates or honeycombs. Honeycomb is a specialized version of it that's hexagonal in shape and more often rigid, whereas the grids are often made out of a looser type of fabric material. Photographers use these to control light spill, much like we just use the flags to control the light spill from our softbox. In some specialized scenarios, light grids can be used to control the quality of the light as well, to make it a little bit more focused. I'll show you my setup in Maya. So here's a light grid I've made from some simple polygonal geo. We can see the area light inside there. So let's take a look at the render. We can see it's blocked a lot of the light spill along the edges. Let's take a look to see what type of flag we'd need to get to achieve the same effect. Now we can see that the flag itself has to be a lot larger and extended much further into the scene to block the same amount of light. Now another way in which they're useful is that they're able to focus the light so that the shadows become less spread out while still retaining the parallel light beams coming from the softbox. So here I've extended the grid. Let's take a look at the render. This is going to have the effect of tightening up those shadows and narrowing the beam of area light. So we can see the shadows are quite narrow. Let's compare it to the initial grid render that we did. So here we can notice that the shadows are spread out in V-like defocused patterns. And now they're starting to tighten up into longer columns, but we're still getting this soft area light. One of the disadvantages of using the grid is that it's quite noisy. Arnold needs to sample the area light a lot more to get a clean image. However, on the rare occasions where we do need this specific setup, it's useful to know about it. Okay, now we know how softboxes, LED panels and umbrellas work. We also know how to set them up in Maya and use HDR images for the light so they can reflect in specular surfaces. And we also know how to use flags and egg crates for light shaping.